Hello again. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading you a story called Shortcut by Peggy Campbell. Georgie and his brother Alton walked along the road on their way from the seaside. Their big dog Devil walked behind them. The sun was hot, but there was a cool breeze blowing. They had spent a good morning and now they were enjoying the walk home. They stopped at a shop to buy a drink, and when they came out, Georgie said, Let us take the shortcut. No, his brother said. I have to stop and see somebody further up the road. Well, you go on, Georgie said. I will go home by the shortcut. No, replied his brother. You know that Mama and Papa will fuss if you go through there alone. Cha, I don't care, Georgie said. Anyway, I will wait for you at the crossroads, and they will think we came together. Come, devil. With these words, he turned off the road and ran quickly along the path that went into the hills. The dog ran behind him. You are too hard ears, Alton called after him. You are going to end bad. Georgie just laughed. He ran quickly with Devil close behind him. It was cool and quiet in the thick bush. He loved it when it was peaceful like this. It was a pity that he would not have time to stop at some of his special places today. There was the cave that had cold water running down one wall, and there was the hole full of honey behind a rock that only he knew about. But it would be better not to stop, or his brother might reach home before him. That would mean trouble. And he had got into enough trouble already this week. Georgie was running quickly, jumping from rock to rock. By the time he got halfway, he was tired and out of breath. He decided to turn off the path and stop at the big guinep tree. Maybe he could find a few guineps to eat. Georgie reached the tree and sat down under it to catch his breath. Devil dropped down beside him with his tongue hanging out. Then Georgie looked up into the tree and saw a big bunch of guineps high up on a branch. It must have been the last bunch on the tree. Georgie climbed up into the tree as quickly as he could and picked the bunch. Then he sat back on the branch with his legs hanging down and started to eat. As he ate, he looked around. It was nice to be up in the tree, high off the ground, looking around like a king. He felt as if he were alone in the world. He liked the feeling. He watched Devil lying at the foot of the tree. He did not look so big from up there, and Georgie dropped a guinep seed on his head. The dog did not even move. Then Georgie heard something coming through the bushes. He was just about to call out, but his mind told him not to. As he watched, he saw a donkey come round a bend. He noticed that it had a crocus bag tied on its back. He could hear its hooves against the rocks. The donkey stopped when it saw Devil lying at the foot of the tree. Devil looked at it, but did not move. Georgie listened and watched the bushes, waiting to see who was going to come. Soon a man came hurrying around the bend. He was a stranger to Georgie. He was a heavy, rough-looking man. As he caught up with the donkey, he grabbed it and boxed it on the face. You fool, fool donkey, he said. Immediately the donkey kicked up and one of its hooves just missed the man. He said a bad word and made after the donkey with a big stick. But Devil was lying in the way and the man did not notice him. He stepped on Devil's tail and the big dog leaped up, teeth flashing. The man jumped out of the way, kicking at Devil. Up in the tree, Georgie wanted to laugh. But he did not make a sound. He did not know the man and he did not want to get into any fuss with him. It would be better if he stayed where he was until the man left. Devil was a big dog and could take care of himself. Devil and the man looked at one another. Then the man moved over to the donkey and Devil turned and disappeared into the bushes. The man caught the donkey and tied it to a tree. Then he took the crocus bag off its back. 
Georgie did not really care what was in the bag. All he wanted was for the man to hurry up with whatever he was doing and go away. The man pulled some green things out of the bag and started to go through them. From his place up in the tree, Georgie half watched him. Although he was high up, he could still see through the branches. At first, Georgie thought they were only leaves, and he wondered why the man was going through them so carefully. Then a little breeze came up suddenly, and some of the leaves flew up into the air. The man grabbed at them in such a frightened way that Georgie leaned down and looked more closely at them. That was when he got the shock of his life. It was not leaves in the bag, but money. The crocus bag was full of $2 notes. Georgie was so shocked, he nearly dropped out of the tree. This was serious. Now he realized he was in danger. That man must be a bad man. He had most likely robbed a bank. If he ever looked up and saw Georgie, that would be the end. For a long time, Georgie held on tightly and kept as quiet as he could. He was glad that the branch he was on was quite bushy. That would make it harder for the man to see him. Georgie wondered where Devil had disappeared to. He hoped the dog would not come back now and start looking up into the tree. He also hoped that none of his guinep seeds were on the ground where the man would notice them. He was really frightened. He wished he had listened to his brother. In the meantime, the man on the ground was still busy with his bag of money. He had finished looking through the dollars and now he was putting them back into the bag. Then as he started to tie up the bag, a guinea fell off the bunch in George's hand, right on top of the man's head. The man quickly looked down on the ground to see what had dropped on him. Georgie held his breath and squeezed up his body. His heart felt as if it was in his mouth. The man saw that it was a guinea that had dropped on him. He gave a quick look up into the tree, but he did not look carefully. He must have thought the guinea had fallen by itself. Then he picked up the crocus bag and walked towards the foot of the tree. Georgie let out his breath slowly. He had been so frightened that he felt sick. He shut his eyes for a second. I hope he's going for the donkey, Georgie thought. He took a deep breath, opened his eyes and looked down. Then he got another shock. The man had disappeared. Georgie could not believe his eyes. One second the man was there, walking past the tree with the crocus bag in his hand. The next second he had disappeared. There was nowhere that he could have gone in that short time. The kidnap tree grew out of the side of a big high rock. There were no other trees near it because the ground was very rocky all around. There was only one little bush at the foot of the tree, right against the big rock, but it was not thick enough to hide anybody and the bushes where the donkey was tied were too far away for the man to reach them in that short time. There was nowhere that he could have gone he had just disappeared. I wonder if it is a duppy, Georgie said to himself. But the donkey was still there eating quietly. If the man was a duppy, the donkey would behave differently. Georgie did not know what to do. He was in serious trouble. He wanted to get away from there as fast as he could, but he could not move until he knew where the man was. There was nothing he could do except wait a while and see if the man came back. By now Alton must nearly be home, Georgie thought. Mama is going to make a big fuss. I wish I had listened to him. After a few minutes, Georgie heard a noise over in the bushes. His heart nearly jumped out of his mouth, but he kept quiet, listening and watching the bushes where the sound was coming from. He saw the plants shake a little, and then who should come running out but devil? Georgie was so surprised he called out devil and then he clapped his hand over his mouth. Devil heard him, looked up and started to bark. Georgie held his breath and kept as still as he could. If devil did not shut up and go away, it would be serious. 
Move, dog. The shout came so suddenly that Georgie jumped. It was a good thing he was hanging on tightly. He looked down and there was the man at the foot of the tree. Georgie could not tell where he had come from. There was no way he could have come out of the bushes and walked across the rocky ground without Georgie seeing him. Yet there he was, standing beside the plant at the foot of the tree. He must be a doppy, Georgie said to himself. The man went up to where the donkey was tied, pulled the rope and got on its back. Georgie noticed that he did not have the bag anymore. The donkey moved off through the bushes. Georgie could hear the sound of its hooves for a time, then all was still. Georgie got down out of the guinea tree as quick as a flash. He was going so fast that he almost fell as he reached the ground. He put out his hand and grabbed at the bush growing at the side of the tree trunk. The bush broke away in his hand and he fell on his face in the dirt. He got up quickly, still holding the bush in his hand. As he let it go, he noticed something. There was an opening in the rock, right where the guinea tree grew against it. The little bush had been hiding the hole. I wonder if that is where the man went with the money, Georgie said to himself. He went up to the opening and looked in. It was the mouth of a cave. Georgie did not even stop to think. Quick as a flash, he squeezed through the hole and found himself in a small dark cave. When his eyes got used to the dark, he saw that there was nothing in the cave except a bag on the ground in one corner. He went over and looked at it. It was the crocus bag. Georgie opened the bag and pushed his hand inside. He felt pieces of paper. He pulled out a handful of the paper and looked at it. Sure enough, they were $2 notes. He tried the weight of the bag. It was not really heavy and he wondered how much money was in it. Then all of a sudden, Georgie heard a sound outside. His heart turned over. He ran to the opening and looked out. All he could see was devil lying in the sun. But he could hear sounds coming from the bushes. As he watched, the donkey came out of the bushes and started across the rocky ground. Georgie did not know what to do. He was in serious trouble. There was nowhere to hide in the cave and any second now, the man would come. If he ran out of the cave, he might not get to the bushes before the man came. But it was his only hope. And he had to decide and make a move immediately. Georgie took a deep breath. This is it, he thought. If I don't make it, this is the end of me. He started to squeeze through the opening. He was only halfway out when a number of things happened. First, the donkey stepped too near Devil and the big dog leaped up and grabbed its leg. The donkey flashed out with its hooves and missed. Devil leaped for its neck. The donkey turned and ran back towards the bushes with the dog after it. At the same time, the man stepped out of the bushes. Immediately, he saw Georgie squeezing through the opening of the cave. What the? He shouted. But he did not have time to finish because the donkey was galloping straight for him. The man jumped quickly to one side, but he lost his step and fell. Immediately, Georgie saw his chance and rushed across the rocky ground towards the bushes. But he was not fast enough. By the time he was halfway across, the man was on his feet again. He started after the boy. Georgie felt a heavy hand grab his shoulder. He screamed and pulled away. Help, devil! Help! he screamed. The words were hardly out of his mouth when devil came flying back. He leaped after the man and grabbed one leg tightly with his teeth. The man cried out and crashed to the ground with the big dog on top of him. By this time, Georgie was tearing through the bushes like a wild elephant. He ran as he had never run before. He did not stop until he reached home. When he caught his breath, he told his family what had happened. His mother nearly died of shock. You see what hard ears can bring, Alton said. 
Of course, he had reached home long ago. Come boy, straight to the police station, his father said. Although he was very tired, Georgie hurried to the station with his father and Alton. In no time, they were moving through the hills with a strong party of policemen. When they got to the guinep tree, the man was gone. Only devil was there, lying peacefully on a rock in the sun, as if nothing had happened. Devil, shouted Georgie when he saw him. What happened? Devil did not even move. The policemen searched the cave, but there was nothing in it. They searched the bushes around, but there was no sign of the man. There was no sign of the man's fight with devil on the rocky ground. There was no sign of the money or the donkey or anything. There was nothing to back up George's story except the broken bush at the mouth of the little cave. Devil, Georgie said, what happened to the man? Devil only showed his teeth as if he were smiling and rolled over in the sun. I wonder if this boy is telling the truth, one of the policemen said. Yes, Georgie said, I tell you the man was here with the money and the donkey. See where the bush broke away from in front of the cave? And see a guinep seed here that I was eating? He picked up a wet, dirty seed and held it out to the policeman. The policeman did not touch it. One guinep seed can't tell us anything, the policeman said. Nothing special about finding a guinep seed under a guinep tree. I don't believe you, Georgie, said Alton. You love to tell story too much. I told you not to take the shortcut. Mind your own business, Georgie said sharply. Their father put an end to the quarrel. I think we had better go now, he said to the policeman. I don't know whether to believe the boy or not, but it is no use hanging around here. Let's go. I will deal with Georgie when I get home. With his head down, Georgie followed them sadly across the rocky ground. Then he turned and called to Devil. Come, Devil. The dog got up and came running across to him. At the same time, a piece of paper blew up into the air from the ground where Devil had been lying. Look! Georgie screamed. Everyone rushed back. Georgie picked up a $2 note from the ground. He handed it to the policeman. Only one note? asked Alton. That can't tell us anything. Maybe you put it there yourself to fool us. But his father did not agree. It looks as if you might be telling the truth after all, he said to Georgie. The policeman agreed with him. It is a pity the man disappeared, said one of them. But don't worry, we will soon catch up with him. As usual, Alton had the last word. You see what shortcut can bring, he said to Georgie. You are lucky it didn't end worse for you. The end. Well, that was an adventure. <laughs> I hope you liked that story. If you did, please remember to click the thumbs up below and share it with your friends. And if you have not yet done so, hit the subscribe button right at the bottom, right, right there. Yeah, right there. Thank you. Bye.